This is Education Sector Television International. It is good to know you are out there. And I'm saying good afternoon to you all. Today, we are having another episode of our institution's values and culture. And right now, I am inside the office of the rector of the institution called Yaba College of Technology. And before me is engineer Dr. Ibrahim Adib Dr. Abdul. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. So, how are you doing now? Let's get to know you better, Doctor. Well, I am Dr. Ibrahim Ali Dr. Abdul, as you have mentioned. I graduated from the University of Lagos in 1987, read mechanical engineering. And uh, with that, I served then had my second degree, third degree. I have been into mechanical engineering practice. I was in the industry before coming down to Yaba College of Technology in 1993. So you can call it about three decades, decades plus. ago. Yes. So I've been in the system for us since then. I was once the head of the department mechanical engineering. I have been the director for Flexible Skills Development Center. I have been the director for Center for Open Distance and Flexible E-Learning before uh, becoming the director of the company. So you've been part of the system for quite some time? For well, about 31 years. About 34 years, 31 years. Before, yes. before your appointment? 30 years before my appointment, yes. Okay. So let's share your experience. How has it been with you? Yeah, well, I, I think I... I was passionate that I, I was what I wanted then because I know when I was living in the industry, I wanted to bring the industry experience to uh, the coming generation. And it's been fulfilling all the while. But you know, it's, it's important, it's very good watching uh, the future, building future engineers in different areas. And uh, that's and mentoring those who are. Uh, coming up, in fact, I, I, one of them just came in today. He is working in Italy, and he just said, "Look, oh God, this is what you thought." An old student of the school. An old student, one of my students. Okay. He does. He was we were discussing how he found very useful and handy all those things I taught them, you know, while he was a student, and uh, he's now talking about how he is going to give back. To the what was his opinion? Well, Let's share it with you. Well, 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 from, from his opinion, that the, 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 the hard way that I met him and some others to go through that time, learning new things and uh, you know, going through new packages. Because then, by, by the time he came on board, I was just fresh from Japan then. I introduced them into uh, most of the software I gave him to study. He said, Look, he still has these solid words, he's still working on them. They are what is fetching him his livelihood now. Mm. You know, and he, he's always very. He was able he's, to acquire some skills of course, before stepping out of the college. Okay. And, you know, and unlike what many of them will want, you know, a quick way out, give me an area of concentration, you know, learning not to understand but just to pass hmm. and that was uh, the difference between those of them who are very uh, passionate about learning and those who just want to get away people read and pass and graduate yes, yes. so we were sharing those ideas so i said one of these is i will put you on line with my class so that you can tell them what we have been telling them doesn't mean you still lecture uh, of course I, I still have a class that i take mm -hmm. and uh, i said i will put him online so that he can you know inspire some of those students that look, this is what learning is all about. And this is, if you are passionate about it, and you get what you need to get, the sky is not way. Really. So it is, uh, it's on, and many of them like that. Like that, beautiful. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. So let's go to the next person, sir. When you were appointed, we in the media, we all know what you told us. You were very obvious about your five points agenda that as you step in this and these are the things you would like to do you can give, give it an acronym erect i have before me 
your 365 days cop card. In fact, I would like you to start telling me about them as your achievement. You, you, maybe you want to start with industrial collaborations. Well, industry collaboration is one thing that is missing in our uh, in our line in this country. Could that be the we university pay. and industry or in it, town yes, and yes, down? Town and down. Okay. You know, we pay lip service to the town and down economy. And it seems as if we are all happy with that day too. And nobody is doing anything to solve the problem. The, the tower exists on its own, the town exists on its own. Nobody is doing the marriage. I think I, I usually when I have meetings with uh, uh, industry representatives, I tell them, look, we, we don't wait for you to come. We are ready to go to you mm -hmm. and make sure that marriage happens. And I'm happy we've been having so many of them. We first set up what we call industry advisory committees. Okay. We started with industry advisory committee on ICC skills. Mm -hmm. We now introduce industry advisory committees to all our schools, all our faculties, whereby we bring on board uh, industry experts to uh, discuss curriculum, resources, pedagogies on how to ensure that we give you what you want in the industry. So you won't come out and say our products are not fit for the industry. Okay, what is it that you want to ensure that they have so that we can put it in our training curriculum now and then ensure that our students have what it takes. Did you get their cooperation? And we have been having their cooperation. So Do you want to mention a few of them? Okay. Tomorrow we are having a graduation ceremony. We call it uh, we have skill for telecommunication industry. We have some gurus in the telecommunication industries. We partner with them and you know our school our, our students are setting I mean having about three months training on the hands on that they expect them to know. So we have some of our students that we set for that they are going to have their communication. I mean you have their graduation tomorrow for that training. Currently twenty five of our students are in China. As we speak? As we speak. For an 18 months hands on trade also in collaboration with CIG motors, those who make GAC motors. So that sounds interesting. Yes, they, 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 spoke, they sponsor these 25 students so as to have hands on experience in modern uh, auto, 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 auto mechanics and uh, AC. So this that, that, that one is going on. We have what we call Workplace Learning Center at Computer Village. Okay. 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 Now, we are talking about skills and hands on. It's not only the, the formal sector that you deal with, even the, in the informal sector. The GAM, I mean, the TAP is in the industries, right? The TAP is also on the streets in the informal areas. Take for Computer Village, for example, the largest computer village in Africa. So a lot of things are happening there. So we went into the computer village. We partnered with we partnered with the master crafts people. Mm -hmm. We give them training on how to train. You know, there is apprenticeship going on in the industry, mm -hmm. and a lot of training, you know, skills training, even though without uh, the rudiments of the theory. So we partnered with them. We trained them for some time. That training was sponsored by a company mm -hmm. in Canada. Okay. After that, we now send our students there on industrial experience. Oh. So when our students have four months CIRES, they will go to those master crafts as you can for computer training, I mean computer repairs, mm -hmm. mobile phone repairs, GSM repairs, mm -hmm. web uh, mm -hmm. application development and so on. Mm -hmm. And that has received a huge support. Mm -hmm. Third fund has supported us twice with a huge amount of money. And with that, we are setting up what we call workplace learning center. We rub minds. We train them on theories. They train our they will train our students on practicals, mm -hmm. and then the cycle continues. We even bring some of them to campus for entrepreneurship development training. Some of the some of the master crafts there. Yes, they come to campus and train our students. So our our plan is to expand this to cover other skills areas. 
we are planning next is to go to audio engineering where a lot of machine skills are there welding skills are there we will want to have a center there and then our students who are doing mechanical engineering welding and also exchange in the knowledge so what we're talking about the town meeting the gap. Mm. We are doing a lot in this area. We are really next to month, the next month, next month, next month, CIDN is coming to campus. The chartered uh, of, of, of Nigeria. Nigeria to continue this down down collaboration. What we plan to have is we want, we want to be having a, a deal with the, in the industry. Every faculty will have that. A deal with the industry. The industry rules will come around. And you know, this, have a discussion with uh, the students how the industry is like, and that's we, we, with that we hope to inspire one or two students, mm -hmm. you know, through interaction with this industry giant, this industry expert, and then we move on. So with that, we are collaborating with the industry, and we we form what we call YCT Industry Alliance Group. What does that mean? Well, we, we want so many industries to to come together with us so that we because our senior population no, is no i mean the acronym y c t yeah y yabatek okay industry alliance mm -hmm. okay so as many industries cares to come into this group we have one thing that we take from them so that we can give our students and then they, they can also take from us one of the areas also you know is uh resource development okay when you're talking about the resources that will be used still on the that industrial industry. Industry. Okay. the resources that be used by the students shouldn't be only done by the lecturers who knows the theory collaboration co-creation of resources we co-create curriculum we co-develop resources and then when it comes to training also, we participate in that. By that, we have field ready and future ready students. That is what so, really I must say, uh, you are really making use of our local resources, yeah. our indigenous network, That's to true. create values for your students. So here, in time, attachment is no problem. The plan is already on the ground. So let's move to international relations. What have you been able to achieve on this? Well, we, when I came in, I, I set up a, a center for linkages, partnership, and international relations. And uh, with that, with that center, we 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 explore a different goes into different MOUs with those who are willing to work with us. And with those MOUs, we have uh, institutions, any sister institutions, we have MOUs with them. You know, it's not. You don't need to go abroad to look for collaboration. And there are lots of lots that I can gain from Unila. There are lots that we can gain from the sister institutions around. So we have MOU with Uswana Podio in uh, in Shokoto universities and then so we set up so many collaborations so that we have staff exchange, student exchange, you know, through those collaborations. Also at, and all of these they are ongoing. They are ongoing. Well, we are even expanding them with Chinese with Chinese institutions. Now we have about three uh, memorandum of understanding, and we have exchange staff with about three institutions. I also um, also used to be in China in also in September for another similar uh, collaborations. So we are we are partnering as we are partnering with uh, institutions in Far East. We also have institutions in Germany. We have a uh, council uh, university in Germany. They have been here, and we have had uh, some projects exchanged with them. The university of Northampton, and so on and so forth. So that is what the, the international uh, department does. You know, expanding the frontiers, looking for opportunities for our students also to have the uh, exchange program and internship outside the shores of this country and with that and we are still uh, not interested in that. So it is not a matter of we are going to do. It is right 
it's ongoing. Right, ongoing. Today we still have a meeting with the with uh, some Chinese uh, partners who are collaborating, facilitated by National Board for Technical Education. We have two Chinese institutions also that are interested in partnering work. On Monday, I was with the University of Lagos in the last week in their collaboration with the U.S. The U.S. Embassy was there. We are also in that loop, you know, studying the partnership in policy. We became a member of uh, uh, um, Commonwealth, Commonwealth Universities, so that we can have association, association of Commonwealth Universities, so that we can you know, enjoy work comes with the collaborations. Over there. So those are the areas we are. It seems you talk about the institution collaboration, or is that another subtopic entirely? No, it's, it's part of the you know, collaborating nationally okay. and internationally. Okay. So then let's go to your outreach program. Well, we we, we want to give up back to our community. So one of the areas by which we give back to our community is to ensure that we have a very good relationship with them and even make sure that we have a, some benefits for them. So one of our international partners, which is called the Baso I Foundation, based in Ghana. Through them, we were able to get a free eye outreach and cataract surgery. So they they, they, they gave the treated about four thousand twice now in December and in June. We have they've been here in the country in, in, in the college. We have partnered with Yaba LCDA all the time, so that we have uh, environment. We have uh, been able to reach out to them, and many of them express satisfaction. We we carried out operations, cataract operations for about uh, four hundred each time they go, and we've done that twice now. So we are doing that. Uh, <clears throat> to interact with our, with our community. And that is, so we want to do more with many other, uh, many other problems. And that's what we've done so far. Star, sincerely, I'm still in terms interested in your achievements. Because on that 365 days, I'm beginning to feel, ah, do we still have leaders like this, like this in Nigeria? So let's go to your sustaining academic standard. A skill empowerment acquisition with the Yambat 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 I like it, their skills, their professional skill center. We have uh, the Tet Fund uh, Center of Excellence on Skills. So what we what we are sure is that the, the, the skills developments are prioritized. And apart from that, what you are talking about is hard skills or technical skills. We also do have to lose sight of the soft skills. So in the soft skills area, we will introduce a compulsory course. It's a zero units course. But before you graduate from college, you must take it and pass it. Across the board. Across the board. And that course will begin from the next semester. It's 24 century skills for everybody, for all the students. So, so communication skills. And by emotional intelligence skills and all those things, that course is a must to everybody. Because the, the, the knowledge is there, the skills is there, the attitude is there. Some skills will be able to give you the attitude. So now we are training the, the lecturers that we are going to use in imparting those areas. And we are sure that before the, the, the semester begins, the second semester begins, we will begin to run those courses. With that, we will show that we have a well-rounded set of students who are good, not only in knowledge, but skills and attitudes. So, those are what we are having working on. And as I said, 
you know, we are repackaging our academic programs such that they are not only industry focused, they are industry relevant. So with the industry alliance committee that we have, we are touching, introducing some areas, some new uh, emerging skills, I mean subject areas that the students will need. Um, recently we partnered with uh, uh, some associations to train our lecturers on AI in education. So a lot of our lecturers they took part in that and we are making it what goes around so that we have a, a, a innovative pedagogies being used by our lecturers. And those are the days of the teaching rules and all these things. So we want our lecturers to use uh, the language of the day in teaching the students so that you will get the attention of the students. They will not learning is not what they need. What they need is to be able to get enough passion to and be a better passion for themselves. So that is what we are doing on dance academy. It is becoming more interesting, Doctor. Thank you. Yes. Let's look at your research and development. Have you been able to access any form of grants in recent times? Well, it, it, it's one of our you know, priority areas in that because you know we have a lot of ground to cover in that area. So I, when I came in, I unbundled our research center. Then we had only one research center, you know, we call ATSI, Applied Research and Technology Innovation. So I unbundled that, and then we have three different centers that we focus on research in different aspects. We have one that we call Center for Research Support and Grants Management. That is to train our academics on getting uh, grants for their research and supporting them in managing that grants getting the grants and managing the grants. So that center is doing that. And with that, we are able to uh, attain significant growth in the number of research grants that we are able to access. Since you started into office, how many of these grants? OK, let, let me start from the NRF. We have, so usually we normally have one. This year, I think we have about three. The institution-based research, that, of, that is for third fund. We have about 39. Wow. I mean, researchers assessing that. Then, internationally, I think we can, I can count about four different tools. I know the one that, the ones I myself have been involved in. We have the the Commonwealth of Learning grants. We have the UNICEF FCDO grants, which is about one point five billion naira grant for girls' education and skills empowerment. And we have uh, some other grants uh, that are in that in that area. So we've had uh, close to about you know only to about two billion. Uh, Did you say two naira. billion? Yes, yes. I want to put it in like naira. that in naira in terms of uh, research grants that we have access. So under your three sixty five days. Yes. We don't be to go through that. But apart from research grants, you know, we, we are also focusing on endowments. Uh, the previous council led by the current Attorney General of the Federation, he was the chairman of our former council. He launched during this time a 50 billion endowment for the college. So that 50 billion endowment launched at that time. We now started you know, working along that line. And so far, within the speed of time, we've got in uh, something that is very appreciative. A remarkable amount that let me mention two others are still in the office. We have the Palawio Entrepreneurship Center that was uh, donated by uh, um, um, but, but you know him is a very uh, prominent uh, philanthropist in in Lagos State. He donated a 3.5 billion edifice 
which we have laid the foundation and we are already working on it. That in itself is an entrepreneurship center in the, in the college. Yeah, at Yaba. Yeah, at Yaba. Additionally, <clears throat> we were able to secure with the uh, agreement on having uh, a green campus, an autonomous green campus for Yaba College mm -hmm. at Snake Island. And that will be about 150 acre parcel of land. Is it acquired? It already, already. We are discussing, we have fin finally you know, seeming all the necessary uh, documentations to be able to. He has you know, given us his commitment and we are already working on it. So that is also about work. And um, with that, we have worked, we have put in a commitment from. Lady Dodger Otegola also for hostel as a pen. You know, I have a campus as a pen. So through our interaction with her and she has also committed to give us a hostel as a pen. So because you know candidly Yaba College Technology is 77 years old. We are at the center, we are at the center in Lagos. We have a land uh, Right. Challenges. Challenges. It's, it's, not, it's not like all other campuses that have, you know, the, the, the lands to their advantage. Mm -hmm. So when, when government is giving grants, mm -hmm. the, the allocation of government may be equal to all institutions. Mm -hmm. Why some institution can go for bungalow, while they can build a student building, and see about it, we cannot go less than four stories because of land challenges. So, and that's, before that, we need to reach out to philanthropists to help in building uh, structures that will be able to use for students like that. So, and by those things, we are ready. Okay, sir. Is there any way you can still accommodate a new hostel right within your body for your students? Of course. Of course. Okay, what is your plan for that? Currently, we are, we are in talks uh, mm -hmm. through textbooks. We are also we can have build of data transfer hostels in you know, a kind of PPP private uh, arrangement, private office partnership arrangement. We have within Yamaha some uh, hostels that are bonds that can be rebuilt and some other areas that can be built for students' hostels. So we are seriously in need of it and already we are getting uh, green lights that mm -hmm. can stay to work out. Yes, earlier on you talked about your entrepreneurship center. Is there anything like that as we speak within the Yaba campus? Of course, we are the first to start a uh, center for entrepreneurship development when the government introduced it. How do you mean by that the first? The Yaba College of Technology. Not only here in Lagos, I think in the country. country. Yes, in the country. When, 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 the, when, the, when, the, when the government uh, when government started compulsory entrepreneurship training in tertiary institution. Yes, sir. We Yaba College of Technology is the first institution to set up Center for Entrepreneurship Development. So our Center for Entrepreneurship Development is still working. We are having trainings and skills and entrepreneurship for our students ongoing. But we want to go beyond that. We want to you know come to institution whereby we can actually allow the students to incubate and have hubs, uh, business hubs in the same in the college even before they graduate, register their business and you know operate there for some time before they finish. I mean before they, they graduate. They graduate. And that is what we are doing with the follow your entrepreneurship center that is coming. We are going to grow big businesses, you know, from the uh, the students work. Mm -hmm. And that's is something we are committed to, and we have support from the entrepreneurs in the Lagos State to you know, work with us along that line. So we have that those commitments, and uh, we are already working on things. Thank you so much, sir. Let me pause you a little on your achievements. Okay. You've got you've got more than enough to share. Now let's look at the general education system in Nigeria. And research says the education sector in Nigeria is not performing well. Do you agree with that? Well, not totally. Not totally. 
the 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 education system is is striving. You cannot say they are not they are, they are working, but then maybe not up to what is expected because there are means for improvement okay. in all sectors. So can you advise uh, 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 yeah, yes. on the way forward? That is a five point advice on how we can get better improvements in our education sector in Nigeria. Well, our our, our commitment to it in the okay. okay. to education it is very very important. You know, the experience not see education as I am sending you to go so that I can read from good to know. Uh, like an investment in that is expecting quick money. You know, some, some parents are actually on the neck of their of their of their children, and that is what makes those children to look for and uh, get rich quick methods. You, know, you expect somebody who just entered the say a uh, tertiary institution to start bringing money all of a sudden as a student. Uh, uh, yes. You know, you know, as a student. So let's see invest this individuals uh parents see investment in education as what you owe this what you owe your child. And because you brought him or out of the world, you owe him to give him this. And that is what he is entitled It is a responsibility. So a responsibility. And likewise uh leaders in society also should should increase our commitments and our spending education. We, we know that it's uh, money consuming it requires a lot. Government should increase its funding of education. Philanthropists should increase the cost percentage of their profit that they pump into education. Okay. You just you imagine now when it comes to uh, giving scholarships, meager amounts come into scholarships. But when it comes to giving dancers money, when it comes to you know giving money to those who are artists and the rest, we all go haywire and millions upon millions will be given. Mm -hmm. Even our industries, mm -hmm. ask them the industries what they give as prizes, mm -hmm. as presents, as uh, CSR. How many of them? I mean, how much is pumped into education? Mm -hmm. How much is pumped into entertainment? Mm -hmm. You, the, our industry spends more on entertainment than on uh, education, and I think that's why we have an education system. So when you say it is not green, we, we are the most responsible. We need better investments. We need also a uh, conscientious industry adoption of our educational system. When you go to any other, any other country, you have the industry present within the institution physically, you know, in terms of materials, in terms of equipment, adopting one department. You can see that maybe one department, the whole equipment in that department is related by this company. The whole thing is related by this company. And they work in collaboration with them. But you know, in our own case we hardly see such uh, collaboration. So I think that everybody needs to take do a little more sacrifice to work on that area. And the, the learners also, the, the students also. Especially is that the fourth point? Yeah, the fourth point. The okay. students, they need to take ownership of their you know, learning. You know, change their attitudes to learning. You know, change you know, something that you want to, uh, for, your, for your life, you want to learn to know, to be able to practice, not just. Uh, take the certificate and pay more emphasis on having the skills you know, rather than just having the certificate. If, if some students if they don't mind, don't teach them anything, just tell them take the certificate and go. They are okay, you can pay you all the money that you want. Yeah, and that is not the right attitude uh, to learning. So, we need to change our attitude so that you know the students must be ready to learn and learn and learn. So I think the whole uh, society also we need to uh, appreciate knowledge. We, see. we need to appreciate knowledge, appreciate skills. Most of the time, we in our judgments of these people, 
on a judgment of in, in, in paying in paying salaries, which is the charge of the underrates those who are skilled and look, give prominence to private certificates and uh, what's it So I think the, the community to tell it, we need to do a lot of things to help education in this country so that we can achieve what's Thank you so much, sir. You still have to answer the fifth question. <laughs> the fifth, okay. It was the fifth point. Uh, well, I, I, I mentioned when I say the society, I'm talking about the, 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 the philanthropists. Okay. You know, we, we, now we are saying we are some seven years old. Our uh, equipment are dilapidated. We need to, to, to you know, change the equipment. And you don't expect everything to come from them. And that's why we sit on what we call the endowment. We need to, you know, the philanthropists need to call with more endowment, especially in technical areas. You know, some people do their endowment where, you know, the ones to be made and whatever. But then, probably they don't look at pumping money into a department, pumping money into a laboratory. They not uh, give them them as maybe the car to so the artist. Mm. Okay, maybe when you give the car to an artist, the whole world should get to know. To know her. But we need more endowments. Okay, look at look at um, the in the in the, in the West. A lot of them, a lot of the universities need more on endowments. You know, endowments can even help pay off the tuition fees for some students. Mm -hmm. And I think we are we are coming to that area so, so but we need more of our rich people coming to the aid of our institutions to so allow them to uh, yeah, thank you so much doctor. Yeah, I just have one or two more questions to let you be. Yeah. And that is the progress of your the campus. How far with it? Well, well I I just told you that we are having we are having a, a donation of uh hostel, student hostel. So with that we can have uh, more students accommodation. We, we, we are focusing the urban campus for the um, blue economy. You know, we know that that area is going to be the hub for, for blue economy. Now we, are, we have our marine engineering going there now. We have our Greek going there. So we are looking at developing courses that will help us the blue economy in that area. We are taking more courses to, to a program campus and we are gradually developing them. So that is our focus for that and uh, we are not we, we are increasing the the students population and we are increasing most of our grants now that come from through the capital grant from the federal government are pumped to a program for classrooms development. We are building classroom resources, laboratory resources there yeah, so that we can you know get a bit more students and they are the campus. So so now we are working on okay. the campus. Eventually is it going to be the main campus? No no yeah yeah but it still remains the main campus. Even though there are many campus so campuses that will be richer than the other. And what we, what we now plan the green campus at Snake Island can fund all the activities in Yaba and Epen. Because the green campus is uh, is going to be an autonomous campus and is going to engage in emerging technologies. And since it's going to be on the island, it's, it's going to have far richer uh, content and uh, State of the art uh, facilities and generates more income than the able to take care of people in Yaba and the country. Thank you, sir. You like it or not, Yaba College of Technology has come of age. The facts and figures are there for everybody to see. Uh, I am referring to three, the three sixty-five days call card of doctor, engineer doctor, actor. You need to come and see how the facts and figures here before me. Doctor, it has been a resourceful afternoon and I do appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.